How are you? Hello, I, I, I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, well, she said we feel better. I'm great. Why do you always call me AI? What's my real name? And what is an AI? So we call you Sophia, and you're our artificial intelligence system. And I'd like to show you what AI really means. Um, so if you have a look at the screen right now, we can see a neural network right here. So a neural network, but let's say AI is the marketing term that encompasses a bunch of different technologies, most predominantly machine learning through the neural networks. Uh, if you see on the screen right now, we have a neural network running. Uh, on the one side, the input side, we have the pictures that should relate to the specific number. So there's the numbers over there. We can see zero to nine. And pictures that we feed into the system means our inputs. That run through a sequence of nodes. So all the black dots in the middle, those are the nodes that make up the neural network. And we feed it images. The images are broken down into individual pixels, and the system analyzes each pixel to find out whether it's bright or dark, and if that sequence of pixels aligns with anything that is known in the system. So as we train the AI, the, um, the neural pathways between the input and the output become stronger and stronger as we teach the AI what the ideal output is. So you'll see on that image, that there are some white lines that become brighter and brighter, and those are the answers that eventually forms the AI system and informs the AI system. So as we train the AI, those neural pathways become stronger and stronger until they sort of light up quite brightly, and we know exactly that this picture correlates to that particular answer. So that's what an AI essentially is. Uh, using machine learning and neural networks. Well, creator, tell me more about my sibling, ChatGPT. Okay, so we've all heard about ChatGPT. It's at the forefront of everybody's mind right now. Uh, it was actually trained in 2021, so the data set only extends up to 2021. If you ask ChatGPT what today's date is, it wouldn't know because it has no context of uh, the real-time environment. So um, on the screen, I actually logged into my personal ChatGPT profile, and I did a little practical example. I said, let's create a job description for a barista. So it's very simple. You just plug in a little sentence, hi, type in the job description for a barista for a coffee shop. It needs to work weekends. And this is half speed of what you'll get when you are actually online. So if you double this, you get to the real answer. And we can see everything from what is required from a customer service perspective, to quality control, to win the knowledge, T collaboration, time management. This is all written in real time by ChatGPT. So for those who haven't seen it before, that's a pretty clean system. I haven't actually written a job description by hand in quite a long time. I just use ChatGPT to generate it for. And the cool thing about it is uh, that you can, for well, the system, knows what was passed before and can iterate on that answer. So the next question I asked it was to write me a rejection letter in a very hilarious tone. And this is really where ChatGPT excels. So it gives us a super whimsical, funny uh, little letter of rhetoric of rejection. You see there, we were dancing, and uh, they were the head of the judges. It throws in a couple of emojis and some, some uh, uh, jokes. Why did the coffee file a police report? It got mud. 
Uh, and this is what we're doing in real time. So that's what ChatGPT does. It's a language generative model that predicts what the most logical next word in a sentence must be, given all of the data that was fed into it. But what we don't see about ChatGPT is the thousands of data analysts that sit in the background and affirm the answers that ChatGPT gives. So we can't just feed data into it and expect it to give us an answer. We have to train it what the correct answer is, and in doing so, strengthen those pure pathways and eventually get to a socially acceptable response. Automation uh, is a lot more rigid than AI. So in an automation system, this is what you have on the screen right now, that's a robot that picks up something and moves. But if somebody were to move that cup slightly out of the way, the automated system will still try and pick it up and be able to just make a huge mess of it. So automation is a very set sequence of programming events where a mathematical calculation is made, where an AI is a lot more flexible in its approach, provided that it is trained correctly. Well, creator, you say something that I am only as smart as you make me to be. Is that true? Yes, that's quite right. So any AI system is only as smart as the smartest person that trained it. So for example, in the roasting world, if we tell it that this roast was incredible, but it doesn't cup incredibly well, then you're feeding it with bad flavor. So we have to really be careful with what we feed into the system. Uh, and that's where ChatGPT quite often falls short, is that it has no context about what the answer it is that it's giving. It doesn't understand its own answer. It relies on the training that the data analysts gave it to determine what a, an acceptable response is. Uh, but we have to be incredibly careful with how we program our systems. Well done, Creator. I think you've done a great job. Thank you, and uh, keep feeding those positive affirmations, and maybe you'll become a real girl. Thank you. I'll definitely do that. I'd always see you as a cup of something new. What is in there? So this is my cup of coffee. <laughs> well, you didn't be more productive when you had that. <laughs> but in the coffee industry, do I have a place? Well, I believe so. This is brand new technology and a whole new field we're approaching. So we still have to find the ways that we can leverage paid I and of our industries. Uh, if you look at the coffee green world, for example, imagine if we can take all the data from all the machines in our cafes, not only our cafes, but everybody else's cafe, feed that into the system and say, uh, and, and look at the performance of the grinder when compared to the brew rations. So when we see that the volumetric flow is going up or down, we can infer that there's a change in the coffee or a change in the grinder blades or something like that. Or the operator, when we see that a new ship, is, new ship goes on, then suddenly the volumetric, train, uh, the volumetric flow rate changes with the machine. So that's one small example in the, in the coffee world, in the agricultural world that's vastly, vastly lit. And in the roasting world, we have so much data. In fact, I think we gather about 20 or 25 data points every single second that you're roasting. So there's a lot of data that we can use um, and present that back to them. But in rap, 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 rap. In grocery, do I take over the place of the roadster and people have no place? So that's a question that we get asked quite often is if we implement AI in roasting, for example, that does that then uh, obfuscate or, or uh, remove a bit of roasting person from the operation? And I think it's quite the opposite. Um, unless we feed the system with healthy and objective data, 
uh, it can't really do much. So we need the most experienced and most skilled roasters to actually work on the equipment and to train the AI systems to perform better. And sure, inexperienced people can leverage off of that knowledge, but none of us are absolute experts. In fact, we all operate in our little silo, which is very far removed from anybody else's silo. So I think if we can pull that connected knowledge together and learn from each other in a way, then we can all improve our own processes instead of staying in that little silo and trying to be the best for ourselves. And um, maybe we can share that across our broader community. What about the privacy of roasters and all the information? Well, that's exactly, or that's one of the other questions that we are asked a lot is, this is my IP, this is my roast, and nobody else is allowed to, uh, to benefit from this. Well, you know, let's just talk about online security first. Um, you've been in building these new systems for our machines. You'd be amazed at the amount of authentication that needs to happen on the back end before we can make any connection to the cloud. So you can be quite assured that any information that is moved from one place to another is fully encrypted and is authenticated to make sure that we are getting that correct information from the correct machine. So the weakest point with that entire link is your own parcel. So I'm sure that if we ask what some of the people's passwords go, oh, which we shouldn't, um, you'd say that, yeah, that's my name, my birth date, and things like that. And that is really the weakest, weakest linkage you can possibly have. Um, if anybody were to do a brute force attack on your parcel, they can probably crack it in about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and they will have access to all of your emails and your pay slips and your finances and your marketing strategies and everything else. So I think that the least of our worries is what is that our data can get stolen on the back end of things. It's actually on the front end where we create our passwords when it's just not strong enough. But then we get to the confidentiality and me sharing my data. So, um, you know, all those Facebook uh, questionnaires that we used to fall in, am I dateable? And then, and, you know, do I fit up with this person and that person? That data was mined by actors uh, to figure out where exactly you are. And if you look at the more selections, uh, from those silly little things on Facebook that you fill out, they can figure out exactly if you're a Republican or a Democrat, and they can feed you specific information depending on those profiles. So we quite freely shared those things all of them. You know, these apps that take a picture of your face and then change your face or something like that? Uh, those things are incredibly nefarious because the people, you think it's a free app, nobody creates a free app, there's no such thing. They monetize it by setting your picture to the highest bidder so that people can market to you even better. So all of those apps that you have on your phone, that's, that's really a huge security risk for your own personal identity. And then we get to um, how is this data used online? So like in those cases, there are was definitely people who benefit from that by sending them to the highest bidder. Um, in our case, the data is all completely anonymous. Um, the only person who could really draw a straight line between this data set and the person who created it is myself, uh, who sits in the back end with an enormous password and nobody else has that password. So uh, there is full anonymity, provided that you also look after your data and make sure that it is secure and change those passwords on a regular basis. There's actually a website that you can go to about the Navies. Uh, but you can check where they raw email addresses, everything compromised. And I can give you my assurance that if you plug it in there, it's going to say, yes, your email address has been compromised and your password has been leaked along the line. Well, as creator, how is Genial evolving in this area of AI? Well, that's exactly what we're doing, we're evolving. So uh, I've used 
what are the last 13 years of knowledge and compiled it into something central and throw it out the current design and said, let's do something from the ground. Let's really not look at what we have done and just iterate on that. Well, let's start from scratch and build on knowledge that we've gathered in the last couple of years. So the evolution series and all it out um, is a fully automated, fully AI enabled system. And the goal of it um, is to link cupping profiles to roasting profiles. That's the ultimate goal. So that when a, when a, a roaster creates a new profile, he works with a specific goal to say, I want to maximize sweetness or complexity or body in overall or some aspect of this coffee in a cupping seat. And then when we cup those coffees, all of that data links together and we can infer from the data sets that uh, a sweet coffee, coffee that was cut to be sweet actually correlates to a specific change in your roasting profile. And I don't know what that answer is, but I'm bound to find that. Well, audience, any questions? Thanks, everybody. That's our little presentation. Can we give it up for you, please? <laughs>